Pareto chart named after Wilfredo Pareto is one of the more crucial things that you will learn in any Tableau certification training. It's used to highlight dimension members that have the biggest impact to the measure in question. Hi all, I welcome you to this session on Tableau and today I'm going to take you through the steps to build a Pareto chart in Tableau. So before we begin, let's look at our agenda for today. We're going to start out by talking a little bit about what is a Pareto chart. Then we are going to go straight ahead and build a Pareto chart on the Tableau desktop and then conclude our session. Now with this very short agenda in place, let's go ahead and start learning about Pareto charts. But before we begin, kindly take up this time to subscribe to us and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from the Edureka YouTube channel. Also to learn more concepts in Tableau and to gain professional mastery, don't forget to check out our Tableau certification program, the link to which I'll leave in the description box below. So without much ado, let's get started. So what is a Pareto chart? A Pareto chart is basically a dual axis combination chart in Tableau. On its primary axis, as you can see, bars are used to show basic raw quantities for each dimension, usually sorted in a descending order on a secondary axis. A line graph is then used to show the cumulative total in a running percentage format. Now, while this chart type serves a variety of purposes, it is most known for being a part of the seven basic tools of quality control. That is where it majorly dominates. It is traditionally used to identify the biggest opportunities for improvement. Now that we know what it does, let's go ahead and see how it does it. So for that, we are going to go straight to our Tableau desktop. I'm going to be sticking with the quality control scenario and this session will be using the sample superstore which is already available to you on your Tableau desktop. We shall use the data set to look at which products of categories contribute the most returned items. But before we begin, I'm on this page and I have imported the data. But before we begin, first of all, this tutorial requires two additional steps to prepare the data. First, we need to left join the returns table to the orders table. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to drag the orders table. And the returns table as well. Here I'm going to click on this icon and select left join. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to our sheet. All right, and create a calculated field to count the number of returns. All right. So we're going to go to analysis on the main title bar and select create calculated field. Let's name this returns, which will be true to its purpose. And we're going to use a function known as count. Here we're going to count the returned subcategories. And now it shows us at the bottom that our calculation is valid. So now we are all set to build a Pareto chart. Now you can see that our returns measure is available in the measures pane. We're going to first start by creating a bar chart that looks at the number of returns per product subcategory and then we are going to sort it in descending order. So I'm going to bring the subcategory to the columns and return to the rows and then I'm going to sort it in a descending order. Next, what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a dual axis combination chart, which I'm going to do in my rows. For that, I'm going to drag the returns measure again to my row shelf, bring it over here, and click on the drop down button and select dual axis. I'm also going to go on the left and select bar chart. And for the next, I'm going to change the mark type 
again from automatic to a line chart. I'm also going to go ahead and change the color to orange so that it is more visible. At this point, your visualization will look something like the one you see on the screen. I'm also going to go and change the color of the bar chart to something deeper. For visibility purposes. Okay. Yeah, this color looks good. Okay. Now the step that makes a Pareto chart a Pareto chart is basically adding a table calculation and a secondary table calculation to this returns bill. This shall display the cumulative percentage of returns across products in different subcategories. Now to do that first upon right clicking on the second pill we get quick table calculation option and I'm going to choose a running total. At this point your chart should look something like this. Now with the table calculation for running total you can add a second table calculation to the result and that is how we are going to be calculating the raw running total number for each product subcategory and then we'll add a secondary calculation to determine the cumulative person total. Now for addition of a second table I'm going to go back to the return spill go to edit table calculation and check this box in the bottom which says add secondary calculation. Okay. I'm just going to move it a little bit to the center. Okay. Now this is my secondary calculation type and here I'm going to switch it from difference from to percentage of total percent of total. All right. At this point if I move this dialog box your graph should look something like this. This is basically the cumulative percent of total. Okay. Now after changing the axis tick marks for a cleaner look, you will be left with this following visualization that you see in front of you. It wasn't that difficult, was it? You know for a fact now by hovering over this, you'll get your subcategory, the percentage of total running sum of returns and the total number of returns per subcategory. So as we can see right now, 17% of all binders come back, which is terrible for a company and will bring a lot of loss for a company dealing with office supplies. Now this Pareto chart in Tableau can now be used for drawing insights such as the business's three most return product subcategories causing about 40% of the total returns, which you can see are binders, papers and phones. Pareto charts are usually a very effective way to quickly highlight potential for improvement and give enterprises a scale for how urgently a quality control problem should be treated. With that, I come to conclude my session. Now a downside to Pareto chart is that it can only show qualitative data that can be observed. It merely shows the frequency or an attribute of measurement. One disadvantage of generating Pareto charts is that it cannot be used to calculate the average of the data, its variability or changes in the measured attribute over time. The main function of Pareto analysis is to discover the causes of events or to quantify the relative frequency of when these events occur. Pareto charts are powerful tools for solving business problems because every process produces defects, mistakes and errors and hence the need of qualitative analysis. A Pareto chart or a diagram analyzes the frequency of problems or causes of problems in a process. And this technique works wonders to find out the reason for your loss. I shall leave you with that thought in mind. With that, I come to the end of this mini session. If you like this format, you can go ahead and tell us in the comment section below and we shall be happy to hear from you. My name is Upasna. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!